Hello, everybody. Happy to see you all. Uh, welcome to our uh, virtual preview space today. Um, I'm Anwar Kolja Sökten. I'm a postdoctoral researcher in the motivation lab of our social psychology area. So I'm going to introduce our motivation lab today. Um, so first, let me introduce the member of our labs. Uh, we have co two co-directors, um, Dr. Gabriel Oettingen and Dr. Peter Goldwitzer, both of whom work in the areas of motivation and self-regulation. Uh, at the moment, we have two graduate students, Sun Yang Kim, who is a rising third year, and his mother, who is a rising sixth year. Uh, we had um, Tim Walstein, who just recently graduated, but I couldn't help but include him here uh, also. And we will have one incoming PhD student, Marshall Marshall, uh, who will join us from Yale School of Medicine, where he currently works as a post, uh, postgraduate researcher. I myself is the only, I'm the only postdoctoral researcher currently, um, but we will have two more postdoctoral fellows. Um, and uh, Anne Holding will join us from McGill University. He, uh, she had her um, PhD in clinical psychology and Jean Jung is coming from University of uh, Kansas um, and she works in both social psychology and computational modeling. We have two lab affiliates currently, Simona Sierra and Sandra Wittelder. Um, Simona is um, joining us from Italy. Sandra is joining us from NYU Medical School indeed. Um, and uh, Simona is interested in um, social media studies. Sandra is working on health behavior. So we, last but not least, we have a nice group of master's students affiliated with our lab. I encourage you to check our website, uh, which includes summaries of their work and research interests. We also host visitors regularly from Europe as our PIs are affiliated with universities in, in Europe as well. So we have strong international ties and many of us are, are indeed international, including myself. I'm from Turkey. Um, please check our website for details on our research. Um, so let me broadly give you a broad overview of our research interests. We have a large range of research interests really under the umbrella of motivation. We are interested in motivational processes underlying um, a, a range of social phenomena really, including interpersonal relations, intergroup relations. Myself, for example, I'm interested in uh, motivational processes underlying um, bias reduction and increasing collaboration in group settings. Uh, we're interested in, um, again, decision-making, identity-related decisions and task choice is something Liz Mutter uh, is working on. Um, learning uh, romantic relationships like stalking behavior, for example, what motivates that kind of behavior. Political behavior like phonetical uh, tendencies, extremist tendencies, uh, health behavior and social media behavior is something our lab affiliates are especially interested in. And academic behavior and performance. Uh, procrastination, for example, is a topic that attracts a lot of attention uh, from our master's students. Um, our PIs are also are working very much on um, regulation of all sorts of goal processes, really, ranging from goal setting, for example, fantasizing about future behavior, goal pursuit. So how do you form implementation intentions, like if and then plans when you need to make a um, decision and pursue your goal? Um, how do you disengage from your unwanted goals, for example, and how do you regulate your negative emotions, emotions like envy, fear, stress, threat, um, etc. We use a variety of methods really to investigate all these questions. Uh, we do experiments, we highly rely, rely on computerized tasks to gather implicit measures and priming. We have two nicely sized experimental rooms. We also use lab cubicles uh, located on, on the fourth floor in our building if we need to have more experimental control. Uh, we do both online and offline survey studies as well. Um, and um, we are also interested in behavioral change. So we do behavioral observations too. Uh, we are interested in text analysis as well. So we ask, for example, open-ended questions to our participants and examine um, uh, content, analyze their responses by developing coding schemes, also using some uh, language processing software like uh, Luke, Linguistic in Inquiry and Word Cloud's uh, program. Uh, we are also interested in network analysis and computational modeling. So just to give you a little bit more specific ideas about what kind of projects are ongoing currently, um, let me give you one example for an experimental project and another for a correlational project. Uh, Liz Mutter, um, one of the graduate students in our lab, is currently leading a project looking at the relationship between task rules and intrinsic motivation. And she and her team um, are proposing that 
task rules might be helpful, but might, might also not be helpful when, um, to, to increase intrinsic motivation. And, and they theorize that uh, sometimes task rules might feel restricted, restricting, right, um, in terms of reducing maybe psychological freedom, feeling of freedom, and in that way it might reduce motivation, but also sometimes have, uh, task rules um, increases the sense of direction, right, uh, what do you want to do specifically, and in that way it, it increases in intrinsic motivation in turn too. So they use, um, again, a variety of methods. They did experimental studies, online surveys, they recruited participants from from our participant pool uh, with undergraduate students, but they also did um, online surveys with adult samples. Um, they use both self-report measures and behavioral choice measures. And currently um, they are doing advanced statistical modeling with structural equational modeling approach in R. And another example, maybe with a correlational design and with a kind of longitudinal analysis, um, I'm interested in the sense of knowing the future and how that sense of knowing the future might actually um, indeed uh, foster ignorance of facts in the present. Um, so for instance, during COVID-19, we looked at uh, whether knowing the future of COVID-19 relates to ignorance of expert information, greater tendency to embrace conspiracy theories, greater a knowledge gap, which is ironic because people, when they claim to know things, indeed, it seems like um, they, they indeed know less uh, about things. And whether sense of uh, knowing the feature also um, reduces lower, uh, reduces tendency to engage in preventive health behaviors. And we, we found the effects we, we were predicting. So indeed, um, the sense of knowing the feature were blinding people to the current facts. And we also tested the same question with regard to election results, for instance, um, predicting, predicting that feeling like knowing the election results before the election actually took place uh, might actually um, lead to greater tendency to discredit the election results when they are in and greater support for capital mob, for example. And we also found these, these relationships. Um, so just to give you an idea about the methods we use, again, a range of methods, right? Uh, both self-report measure scales. Uh, we um, added a, a performance scale to really understand whether people know about what the CDC guidelines were, for example. Uh, we did behavioral measures to check um, participants' real, real time social distance Thing. And then we also um, adopted both cross-sectional and longitudinal studies over time. So I hope my presentation gave you a sense of large range of topics we're interested in and large range of methodologies. I'm happy to answer any questions through chat or later or right now. So thank you. Thanks so much, Irma. That was really helpful. And one of the things that I thought was particularly great was um, your introduction of all the different members in the lab. Uh, when you come to NYU, know that most labs are structured that way where you will join a learning community where there'll be undergraduates that you will also be mentoring and have as a part of your own research team, master's students, other PhD students, postdoctoral researchers, global visiting scholars. And New York City is a place where a lot of people wanna come. And so you're not just coming to work with one faculty member. Of course, that's really important. You're joining a learning community. So that was really helpful to have our mock lay that out. And that will be applied, uh, that sort of structure is applied to most labs at NYU. I see, um, Taylor, why don't you go ahead and ask your question and can unmute. Yeah, I was wondering um, what sort of studies you all are looking at involving uh, the language measures or the lick. Sure, sure. That's a really great question. I myself am interested in uh, the sense of knowing and certainty. So, for instance, we ask our participants re to report something they really know about. Um, and they, they write whatever they want to write about really freely. And then we test how, how much they, how much certainty they really have in their um, language, right? We use Look software, for example, um, to see how frequently they use words like, I'm sure, I'm certain, I have no doubt, right? To test really, to get a better sense rather than asking them about how, how certain they are, maybe through a scale, we do it more indirectly by checking, um, checking the um, clues in, in language really. Thanks. And we have time for one last question before we'll just turn it over to the chat. So Jacob, go ahead. Jacob Glassman. Hi, um, thank you. I'm curious if you ask, um, this is still developmental, right? So this is with children. I'm curious if you ask um, the children to explain or reason about um, their decision-making um, when specifically in your studies regarding intergroup relations, bias reduction, 
um, interpersonal relations? Yeah, that's a great question. We mostly uh, work with adults. Uh, actually, we are in the social area, so we don't work a lot of uh, a lot with children. Uh, we work with adolescents, though, if you're interested in um, developmental psychology. And um, in, in terms of intergroup relations, we we, for example, collaborate with um, a um, NGO, non-governmental organization, um, and we collect um, survey data and we include questions like, you know, how um, how well they, uh, what kind of groups they have friends with, for example, if that's something you're interested in. Um, but we most of it work with adults. In terms of intergroup relationships, we both use implicit measures, explicit measures to check their biases. Does that answer your question? <laughs> 